Hey guys, it's Linda Winter, and I have another video on my Timey Box. Timey Box bag, this guy here, I've already done two videos, but this one now, instead of this, we're gonna use this. I showed a paper template that I made for the floppy ear, and I decided, because so many of you request it, let's make a template. Notice this is white and this is black, that way it kind of lets you know, hey, they work together, but they're not made you know, necessarily as the only thing. These two go together like this. This makes this size. And believe it or not, it makes this size too. I'm gonna to show you how to do one that's a little bit taller today. But this, with the floppy ear template, does this. So I wanna show you, I did it with the paper template the other day, but I wanna show you with the template. All right, so we're gonna get this out of the way. We're gonna get this out of the way. Notice how this one is taller than this one. We can look from the sides here. It's taller, so I wanna show you how we'll make it a little bit taller. That way, if we wanna put a gift in here, we can do so. All right, so I have got two pieces of fabric and I have right sides together. That way I can draw because these curves are harder to cut with a rotary cutter. So we're gonna draw around those curves. And then I've got two pieces of fabric over here. I put SF-101 on both of these. I didn't put SF-101 on either of these because this is metallic and it's pretty stiff. You can put an SF-101 on here if you like, it's totally up to you. So what I wanna do is show you how we're going to do making a template for the template and making it taller. So what do I mean by that, making the template for the template? We're gonna be basically using this and kind of deciding how tall I want this to be. You can add math to this. You've got a mat that has measuring marks. This ruler has measuring marks, half of an inch, half of an inch. You can say, I want it to be an inch taller. So you could draw a line right here. I want it to be an inch and a half taller. You can draw a line on here. Whatever it is that you want, you would do that here. You would do that over here as well. And then when you go to cut, we'll use this for it. But what I did was I went ahead and cut two and you basically can see right here, when I place this down, this, notice I've got that lined up here. I wanna make sure that this here and this here is where I'm making this. So let's take a look at with the ruler. And you can see I didn't really use the ruler, but that's pretty close to an inch and a half there that I've added to this. So we're gonna have these sides a little bit taller. That means instead of adding a gift that the gift will show, you can, when you tie it, tie it so that the gift doesn't show so much. Or like this one, put a taller gift inside of there. Totally up to you. All right, so what we wanna do, we've already cut our two pieces here. Those are our lining pieces. And I'm not gonna go all the way through step by step by step. We're gonna fast forward because I've done these already in videos. I just haven't done the bunny ear with this. So what we're going to end up doing is cutting the bottom. I'm going to bring the bunny ear template over and then we'll cut all the way around that. So we're going to cut, 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 cut all of this stuff. But when we get up here, we're basically going to be cutting with this. So I want to head that off on the pass and we're going to start right here just by cutting along. Now notice I'm way past that mark. All I'm gonna do, notice I'm going from here, it's hard to see, from here to over here. My fingers are here and then I'm moving my fingers here and I'm gonna cut off. That way it gets rid of some of that fabric. Let's just cut some of that excess off. I'm gonna do the same thing and all I'm doing is looking to see that this is lined up nice and straight and this is fatter than this so I'm just tilting it a little bit and I'm just gonna cut and when I get to here, Notice I'm in front of me. I wouldn't really cut in front of me. I'd be cutting here instead, but it does the job. And we're gonna get rid of this. I don't need that anymore. So what we're gonna end up doing is cutting this part of the template. We'll bring the bunny ears in in just a minute. All right, so what do we do? We cut here into those cut marks. The cut marks allow us to get that nice boxed bottom. And just see here, if I cut all that off, that removes that piece. I'm turning the template, that's that no slip material on the back that's allowing me to do this. If you've seen projects like this, you're using paper templates, and when you use the paper templates, I can promise you that your lining fabrics don't match up with the, each other, and then they don't match up with the outside fabric either. All right, so we've cut the the bottom. What do we want to do? We want to move this up. Remember my pencil mark that I did? I need to go back and put my pencil mark now to here. 
That's where this is, and do you see where that is? To here. So we're gonna move this up, and I'm basically looking the pencil mark and the pencil mark. That gives me that extra inch and a half in my height. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna come back to here, and I'm gonna cut around. So we've already cut this, so I don't have to worry about that. We're gonna cut around. What do we have to do first, though? Go in and trace just that edge. If you have the 28 millimeter, again, the 28 millimeter is gonna do a little bit better, but it's still not gonna maybe get all of those for you. If you're new to rotary cutting, just go ahead and cut a little bit wider. Can you see how I went a little bit wider there? That's okay, because then you can go use your scissors to trim up, but that's pretty close. I'm gonna move this here. We're gonna start over here, and we're just going along, taking my time as I go. And you can see I cut most of that, just that little piece inside of there. That's where you can use your scissors if you want to. All right, we're gonna take our floppy ear. We're gonna place this along. You've got a hash mark here. You've got a hash mark here. I don't need to highlight this hash mark because it shows up pretty well to the naked eye, but this one is harder to see. So if you have a metallic pen, you could mark that. I don't really need to because those are budding up pretty well. All right. So this guy is done, almost. Let's go a little bit closer to this. And this guy over here is done. So I can get rid of this. I don't need this anymore. And then I'm gonna move this in a position that's pretty good to me. This is the bottom, so I don't wanna be cutting into that. I'm gonna cut here, and I'm cutting to where it meets up. All right, we're gonna turn this in the opposite direction. You work in whatever way is comfortable with you. What I love about the no-slip material is that it grabs. So when I go to cut, I can get this in whatever position is good for me. And if you're new to this rotary cutter, go watch some of my videos that I have on there. Watch what I'm gonna do. Instead of going around here, I'm just gonna cut off. That's gonna allow me to turn this, and now we're gonna cut off a little bit and I turn that template as I go and we're gonna cut around. I wanna make sure you all can see what it is that I'm doing. And when I get to where I've lined up with the rest of my cuts, then I've got my two outside fabrics. All right, so these guys here, they're ready to go to the sewing machine. What are we gonna do? We're gonna stitch, we're gonna stitch, we're gonna stitch. And then we're gonna do our boxed bottoms. We're gonna do the same thing over here except except on one of our sides, we're gonna leave an opening right about here for us to turn. You can go watch the video and I've shown you how to do this. All we did here was add the bunny ears and then we made this a little bit taller. Let's take a look and you can see it's not a ton. There's the box bottoms. Can you see how it gives you just a little bit more, an inch and a half? That's what we ended up having. And then once we add our seam allowances, it's still gonna be an inch and a half. All right, at the sewing machine, we're gonna again grab these seam allowance, whatever it is you're using, be consistent. I'm gonna use about a quarter of an inch and I'm just holding in place. You can back stitch if you want to. We're gonna go to the bottom. We're gonna sew the bottom. And on this side, this is where we're going to leave that turning area. I'm going to back stitch a little bit here. We're going to cut those threads. We're going to scoot up a little bit. And just hold in place. All right, and we're ready to do the box corners. I'm going to reach inside here and I'm going to pull. Now you can press those seams if you like, but if you all know, like me, it's just as easy to flip one direction and flip in the opposite direction. Just get those bottoms of the seams lined up and those cut marks that you have from the template, that's gonna give you that nice box bottom. We're gonna do the other side and my lining will be almost done. And remember we flipped this in this direction, so we wanna flip this in the same direction. 
That's about the only thing that I really recommend or that I, I think is like a requirement when it comes to doing the box bottoms. All right, we're gonna do the same thing on our lining or our outside fabric. We're gonna pop that open and grab those corners so we can stitch them down. And one will tend to go in one direction more than the other, so go with the flow. We're gonna do that other side. All right, we're gonna do the last miter or the last box corner. And let's put these two guys together. So at the table, I'm gonna turn my outside, outside right. So right sides out, however you wanna call it. We're gonna pop out the corners a little bit. I just want you to see those nice box corners that we get. And we made this side a little bit taller. It's not nearly as tall as the black and white button one that I have, but it will be a nice little treat bag. Okay, we're going to grab our lining and stick this inside of the lining. And we're gonna match up those side seams. You can use pins or clips here. And I wanna pin at the side seams first. We're gonna stitch all the way around. There's no reason to leave those bunny ears open because we're gonna turn this whole process or the whole project through that opening that we did in the lining. This is another get her done project. This is gonna uh, whip up really, really fast. So if you wanna make treat bags, with goodies that you've gotten, goodies that you've baked, goodies that you purchased, whatever, this is a really cute gift to have sitting on your table for every guest that you have. If you still do Easter dinner, if you still get together with family and friends, if you go to your church and you wanna make some for your nice little group that you get together with afterwards when you go out for lunch, this is a really fun project to just whip up. Make a bunch of these, assembly line. So you're gonna cut all your fabrics, you're gonna press all your fabrics, you know, all all of that and you can really get this done fast. All right, we're moving over to the other side and this is the side where I have that turning area. So we're gonna pin and I'm pinning the seam in one direction and the opposite is, you know, the, the back side is going this way so I don't need to pin. And we're gonna line up those ears too. And if you're good about pinning, then instead of pinning in the direction that I am, you could actually pin in the direction that you're sewing. So you could remove those as you go. This might cause problems as I'm stitching. You know, when I do one pin on one side and a pin on the other side, you may have a problem when you're sewing and have to remove that pin. I just find whatever way gets it done the fastest, but there are all kinds of great techniques that you all may have learned over the years about making what you do faster, easier, better, that kind of thing. And you can see I haven't tucked this in all the way because this ear isn't lined up exactly. I'm okay with that. It's a bunny rabbit. And we're gonna take the table off. All right, so we're ready to start sewing. What we're gonna do is stitch all the way around our ears, all the way around to the other ear, and then we can turn this thing right sides out and stuff this full of goodies, give it as a gift. All right, same seam allowance you used before. I'm gonna put my needle down, get that thread out of the way. If you have pinking shears, this is a great project to do with your pinking shears too. I love this little basket, this bunny, with a plant inside sitting on a table and having those ears flop down. If you watch the second video I did, you'll see a lot of them had plants in them, and it just makes a really cute table kind of a setting. If you do have dinner at a table, it's a nice way to dress up the table for dinner, and just add
want some nice kind of entertainment. Put smiles on everybody. All right, I'm gonna back up a little bit. I was taking that pin out. And we'll get back on there on track. And if you're taking the arm off like I've done, just make sure that everything is laying nice and consistent inside of there so it doesn't get caught. I'm just gonna push inside here a little bit. And I've got one in one direction and one in the opposite direction, so. And we're on to our second ear. And again, I just wanna make sure that these are all lined up right. You can see I didn't pin in any of this area here. I pinned on the other side. So I'm gonna line those ears up a little as I go. Now this is a floppy ear. You can make the floppy ear shorter too. He doesn't have to have the length that I have here and I'll show you how to do that when we get to the table. I like the long ear just because it's a little bit more to not only tie, but also to drape. But it doesn't have to be a long ear. If you wanna do those cute drawstring bags and use this ear for a template, you can do that, but it doesn't have to be this big. All right, we're getting right back to where we started, so I'm gonna overlap just a little bit. I'm gonna grab my pinking shears, and I want to, before I forget, I wanna show you with the fabric what we're talking about, what I was talking about. Okay, so if you wanted to use this part of the ear, but not all of this, we're basically gonna be doing that. So you don't have to use all of this. So you decide how much of that ear you want. If you're doing a cute little drawstring basket and you wanna cut this out, you can fold that fabric. Basically down here, you'd put a fold and a fold in here so that it gives that narrower at the base here. And then you can actually stitch another layer applique inside of there too. Hopefully you know what I mean, where you've got the white bunny ear and that little bit of pink showing, I think would be really cute. But the template right now, again, it's a long floppy ear because we've added this length plus this length. You don't need to do it that long if you don't want to. You could even do it to this. When you're doing it to this, just as you're lining up, just go from here to there. Don't cut inside of there. So that way you can have a shorter floppy ear if you want. All right, I'm gonna pink this and we're gonna fast forward this or we're gonna actually cut this out and we'll come back when this is all pinked. Okay, so I pinked all the way around and I've even pinked at the bottom. We're gonna reach through our little opening that we have here and we're gonna pull everything right sides out. You know, pressing is gonna be an important thing to do here, poking out all of those little ear, the, the bunny ears using a stiletto or something like that. So that whole process of making this look really cute, really clean and fresh, you know, that comes through the pressing and the turning and all of that. All right, so I'm gonna turn this right sides out. I'm gonna poke everything out and we'll come right back. All right, so I showed you guys how to make this cute little oven mitt. This is my shorty oven mitt and I talked about it as not only in your kitchen, but also in your sewing room. Notice what I'm doing. I'm sticking my hand inside of here and that allows me to really get in and press exactly where it is that I want. I can bunch up my hand, I can bunch up my fist and really get right to where it is that I want. So you can really press well. And this works not only with this tie me bag or little bunny, but with a lot of other projects too. So make yourself an oven mitt change the fabric so that it has irons or sewing or whatever it is so you know, nope, this one doesn't belong in the kitchen. This stays right in your sewing room at your ironing board or your cutting table or wherever it is that you're doing this kind of thing. But do you see how that lets me get right up there? All right, so let's take a look at what we've done. We have made our cute little bunny bag. How adorable is that with those ears? Look how cute. All right, I haven't sewn inside the opening, so imagine that I did that. But do you see how cute that would be to flop those ears over? 
So these guys here flopped over this way, or you can turn them this way, but I want to put something inside so you can see. All right, this is the size that this comes as here and here. Both of those are the same. This is the size that I made just a little bit taller, an inch and a half. And then this is much taller and not really that much taller, but yeah, it's not that much taller. Look, just a hair. All right, so I'm gonna take this treat out here and put this inside of here. And do you see when I tie that? It basically is going right to the top. But if I put something smaller inside of there, I could close this completely so that you wouldn't even see whatever was in there. And then you decide how you want to tie those ears. Do I want to have it so that the bunnies are showing or do I want to tie it so that the gray is showing? Do I want to tie it so that the side seam is showing or the front of this is showing? I mean, how adorable is that? You don't have to make this a literal bunny. You can just right on the back, put a bunny tail, a pom-pom. But you can make it a literal bunny if you wanted to. On here, you could go ahead and add with hand embroidery, with machine embroidery, with magic markers. You can add the nose, the eyes, the, you know, the sweet little lips, you know, the mouth. I mean, how adorable is that? So this is the Tie Me Box bag with our bunny ears. This is a floppy bunny ear template, so floppy ear template. And again, it's going to give you these long ears that you can use for a project like this. But you'll see me put these with this template on my storage pod. If you all know my storage pod, it's my favorite template. And I have five different sizes. And these floppy ears are going to look adorable hanging off of either the back or the front of the storage pod. So stay tuned for that. But this template you can buy now in a couple different options. You can buy the Tie Me Box. That's going to have this plus the regular tie template. This guy here, these two together or you can buy these three together, or you can buy just this. If you already own this, then you can buy this just by itself. And it's the floppy ear template. And it works with this template beautifully, but it also works all by itself too. If you just want to make some really cute drawstring bags, some backpacks, some purses, and do a floppy ear, it, it's the perfect thing for this time of the year for Easter. But bunny rabbits are always in style, so it doesn't have to be an Easter project. All right, guys, I hope this is another inspiration for you. We're going to be looking at on the website for this, winterdesigns.com. You're going to go to products and templates, and when you look at Timey Box, you're going to type in tie, T-I-E, and then you'll see the various options that are there for you. Again, you can buy it in a bunch of different um, features. So when you go to the Timey Box bag, you'll have a drop down, and it'll give you all of the options that are there for you. So have fun. I can't wait to see what you all do with this. I hope you have a great time making little bunny, you know, treats like this. This, again, is a great little gift to give to somebody. Fill it with all kinds of treats. Fill it with goodies. Fill it with makeup, whatever it is that you know somebody will really love. So it's just a fun bag, box bag, timey box. Thanks, guys.